Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. Uh, today I'll be showing you how to make Jello using Blender and uh, the Cycles Render Engine. So we're going to be figuring out how to get the kind of slightly reflective flooring here, uh, the partially transparent gel, jello-y stuff, and of course the wibbly wobbly action of Jello. So let's go ahead and uh, open up a new Blender scene. So here it is. Um, we're created by the default cube as usual. Let's go into front view, orthographic, and uh, zoom in. Uh, let's move that up because we can actually keep the default cube for once. Scale that up. This will be our floor. Scale down the cube. Um, let's name this floor and this jello. Okay. Pretty boring. Uh, let's go ahead and start giving it physics. So, go ahead with the jello cube selected, apply the cloth uh, physics. Set spring to 1. Structural to 35 and bending to 0.4. We can leave the rest of the settings alone, it'll be fine. Uh, go ahead and save. Just save often. If we go ahead and play the animation, it will fall right through and not really do anything. So go ahead and enable collision with our floor. We go ahead and render that now. Our jello kind of falls on the ground and bounces a little bit, which is kind of what we want, but it doesn't look as good as we can get it. So go ahead with the jello selected, hit control one to subdivide it. We can also subdivide through the modifiers. Go ahead and you can hit add modifier and subdivision uh, surface. Now in edit mode, hit control R and scroll up once to give it two loop cuts. Go ahead and uh, scale that along the X. Do that to the side as well. So scale along the Y and do that vertically. So scale along the Z. Now you want to kind of keep uh, these loop cuts about equal distance from the corners of the cube. Okay, that's looking pretty good. If you notice, instead of having sharp corners, we now have kind of a beveled corner here. Uh, go ahead and connect, change that to smooth and we'll get a better look. So now if we go ahead and play that, it looks pretty good. So we can start getting into camera placement. Go ahead and go into front view in perspective mode. Um, hit Control Alt Zero when you get the viewport to where you want it. Um, take the back two vertices of the floor and pull it back until it's just out of the camera. Go ahead and scale it along the X to fill in the corners and that will be fine. Uh, pull this up till it's out of the camera, or it doesn't really matter. That's looking pretty good. Now if you want multiple cubes, uh, we can go ahead and create more. If we just leave them as they are right now, they will fall through each other because they are not set to collide with each other. So go ahead and in the physics tab, press collision on each of them. Now, as we can see, they interact pretty horribly. <laughs> um, let's rotate them around a little bit. Ooh. It'll take a little bit of work to get them all to interact properly. Okay, um, I 
which of course Jello sometimes does interact weirdly, that should work just fine. I'm going to end this at 120, or end the animation at 120, because uh, the cubes pretty much stop doing anything by then. Actually, I could probably make it down to 90 and be just fine. Yep, that looks pretty good. So save that. Now we're going to start working on the lighting. So, switch the renderer to, from the Blender render to Cycles render. And if we go ahead and render that, it looks kind of boring. So, we're going to start working on lighting. Go back into front view, orthographic, and above the camera, create a plane. That make it a good size, doesn't need to be too big. Uh, create a new material, call it light, change it from the diffuse here to emission, give it slightly, slightly yellow, not too much. A little bit goes a long way here. Um, you may want to split the viewport and click rendered. Uh, go into front, or into camera mode, and you'll see how it looks. That doesn't look too bad, but let's add more light, because you can never have too much light. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Just make sure that everything keeps its uh, physics working properly. Yep, that looks pretty good. Okay, now we can start working on materials. So go into front view, um, click use nodes, we're going to click mix shaders. The first shader will be glass, the second shader will be glossy. Now I'm going to make green jello, you can make red or blue, purple, whatever color you want. Um, doesn't really matter. Go ahead and make both both of the shaders the same color. So if you use green, make the glossy and the glass green. If you use blue, both of them need to be blue. The easiest way to do that, in this window you can click the little eyedropper and Click pretty much wherever. I think you could probably select the gray. Yep. So you can select whatever color you really want to, as long as it's in this window. So I want that green. Now Jello is mostly made up of uh, water, so I'm assuming that you could probably make this IOR 1.333. It doesn't really matter too much for this render, so if you want to be really technical, go ahead and change that to 1.3. If not, 1.46 or whatever the default is works just fine. So that is looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and give the floor a texture. So call that floor, change that from diffuse to mix shaders change the shaders to diffuse and glossy. <clears throat> Actually in the jello material I think there's a bit too much glossy so if you change that all the way down to zero it will be completely glass and if you change that all the way to one it will be completely that glossy material. So I'm gonna go with a 0.3 
Again, this is just kind of guessing. It's really up to you how how you mix them. That looks pretty good. So this render is pretty much ready to go. Um, if you want higher quality, you can switch this to being 100%, and in the integrator, change the render samples from 10 to, I think I used 60 in my final. Um, also make sure to change this to the AVI JPEG or whatever these movie file formats are, and select the, the corresponding output to wherever you're working on. That way you can find it better. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. If you want to get rid of this kind of grainy look that Blender Cycles comes out with, uh, you can pull out the nodes. Um, I'm going to leave that at 10 and just do a single frame render so that we can kind of get a feel of how it looks. Go ahead and go to the compositing area workspace. Say use nodes, click the little render, it'll go through and do it. Only really need to do this once. I'm going to create a uh, viewer node so that we can see it in this black box. So let that finish and we will see how it looks. Okay, it's done. Um, let's go ahead, we can use a blur and very slowly we can increase the blur. I'm probably going to make that 0.1 and 0.1. Um, hmm. You don't want to go too high because you'll start noticing that this starts to look really not very sharp, <laughs> as you would imagine from a blur node. Um, I usually use fast Gaussian, but flat seems to work the best for getting rid of the grain. Um, I think we don't have enough uh, samples to actually have it work as well as it could, but I think it's a little better than how it used to be. So here's how it is originally. Here's how it is after the Hello, there we go, after the blur node. And I mean, it doesn't do too much to the final image. So that's looking fine. Um, should be ready to be rendered. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Oh, what happened there? Okay, uh, just a moment. Okay, yeah, so just go ahead and give that a render and it should be ready to go. Thanks for watching and tune in next time. Thank you.